Welcome back everyone, Jose21 Crisis here and today we're playing some more Grand Prix World 2001. In the previous episode it was effectively the pre-season of the 2005 season where it, look, it looks like we will be the fourth best team in Formula 1. Ferrari is at the top of the charts with Williams and McLaren behind but we are in decent enough range for, for us to be a... Uh, a contender for the title. Title that we won in the previous year in the final few rounds. We're hoping to do that again with a few more limitations like not being able to use as many rain points as I used in the previous season because the last season was won in the final few in the final few rounds where I put a bunch of rain points and we were super fast. I'm gonna limit myself to just two rain points per driver so I'm not gonna spam the rain points as much, but I'm gonna use some different strategies which you will see as the season progresses. So, what have I done so far? First, I adjusted uh, Alonso's salary. He's now six million. And I increased his experience, both of Alonso and Bordeaux and all those drivers that were rookies at the beginning of the series and pretty much anyone that had less than three experience. Just so, you know, they progress because experience and stamina by that uh, metric barely progress at all. It does increase, but it takes a lot. And remember, it depends on random numbers. And experience, uh, stamina maybe not so much, but experience should increase um, naturally, not me being forced to do it and not being dependent on a random number, but it's something that happens. Uh, change some people around and starting to hire some trainees in commercial so I can move them up. Remember, we have a limit of 80 personnel now which only applies to commercial design, engineering and others they are already at the level they will be until the end of this campaign so there's that so what have I done between the pre-season and this, and this episode I did full setup testing, full testing and overall 149 miles with this program this uh, driver stuff and we got a full setup, full development, full research, full engine and full tire Development shows that we are a 66 rated car, which is a pretty good car, not gonna lie, but it, need, it, it needs to improve. We need to get closer to the top teams. Uh, technology, I'm working on suspension, put 56% of the people there, 12% here on active suspension. I cannot remember if in the previous episode I got, I managed to get the FIA to approve the level 5 traction control, but it happened. I'm very happy because we're gonna have infinite, uh, not infinite, but very durable tires from now on and I'm working on the next year's car which slowly progressing we should it should be fine hopefully the design we're doing right now is legal because by my rules that means that whatever I get here is what I can progress to the next stage so there's that build some spares because of course I have to repair the cars this here's when I'm going to start doing stuff because of course this engine is fine, but it could be better. So I'm taking all of the reliability points, putting them into power. I'm going to do the same after the Australian Grand Prix. And tires, pretty simple. Take these points, put them in resilience, because resilience is overpowered. If you can make the tires last, that is perfectly fine. The hard tires are pretty solid as is. Not going to use them as much. Nothing I can do on the fuel, so there we go. Working on CAD, a CAM, a supercomputer, test rig, and workshop. Next season we're gonna build a wind tunnel, although we won't be able to see it on this um, safe. And I'm probably gonna be able to build a new factory, although I do not know how much useful that will be, but we will see. Anyway, I'm talking to Acer right now because I put some more points into Marlboro, Mile 7, Renault, uh, Michelin, and uh, nothing here, Acer, Castrol, and all of the sponsors I want to talk to. Especially Acer because the trick I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the hospitality advantage on Acer right away To get it first it has to be a sponsor that you not you do not have signed at this point So Williams has Acer so I can get the advantage on Acer, but if I try to get it on Castrol it would not work I could get it on Fiat, but not on Credit Suisse and so on. So the hospitality advantage I cannot get it on on Marlboro, but I could get it on mile 7 and I think I'm gonna go for mile 7 the reason for that is that they're blue and well let me let me just remind you how our car looks it shouldn't look like that stand by <laughs> these little graphic things uh, it annoys me but it's something that happens don't 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 think too hard about it it's one of those old game things where they kind of break so just just 
just will deal with it. It's loading up the proper logos, it should have loaded them, so see? There we go. Those Marlboro, Marlboro is red, it doesn't quite fit. Recording locked up there for a moment, so I decided to cut it and got back here, but my point stands, like, look at this, Marlboro is red, our car is blue, so... Yeah, it doesn't quite match up. In any case, I will... it will depend on who offers more, because if Marlboro doesn't offer as much as a Smile 7, I'll just go Mile 7, but if Mile 7 barely offers much cash, I'm just gonna go Marlboro then. I, I, the colors... Uh, the colors are there. Anyways, um, so yeah, we're looking for more sponsors. Everyone else, I'm gonna try for Parmalat and PSN again, because they've been with us through plenty time. So I wanna keep them. Castro Credit Suisse and PSN, those are the sponsors we're talking to, and, well, that will be it. I'm gonna run this first race with the hard tires. The soft tires will be faster, but with this race on the hard tires, we will know exactly how fast we are relative to the field. For setup, we have six win points, six tarmac points, and I'm gonna add another point in dust. Why six win points, you ask? Well, I did some research, and if you had six, um, and if you, if you have three, six, eight, nine, or ten points, you get a grip advantage. If you have four, five, or seven grip points, uh, wind points, you lose grip. For what reason? I do not know. It's one of those old game things you do not give to... Okay, here's a little glitch I will tell you about in a moment. But, yeah, uh, actually, just... just uh, Anyway, uh, wind, you want it at six, or you want it at eight. That's how I'm going to do the setups in this game for now and hopefully gives us a good result. This thing right here is a point we didn't have. I right now have applied 11 points between both drivers and the reason for that is that at times this game can glitch. How it can glitch? It applies a point twice. It doesn't count it as a setup point but it counts it as, as a dust point. Now, I do not know if that will count as a negative point for me. Like if I will have like minus one points and then everything will be ruined when I do setup. I do not know and I do not intend to find out in this occasion. So everything is ready. Prepare the drivers for the qualifying. Just full on orders. Confirm their orders. Confirm the assembly, everything is complete. Right, so opening round of the 2005 season in Australia, Melbourne, and hopefully we have a great one, so let's get in there. Always nice to see that graphic. So, the number one car will be that of Olivier Panis, sec number two car, Fernando Alonso, as they finished in the previous season. Third and fourth will be Juan Montoya and David Coulthard, fifth and of McLaren, fifth and sixth, Ralph Schumacher, Giancarlo Fisichella of Ferrari, Rubens Barrichello and Justice Stappen of Williams, seven and eight, Jan Alesi and Gaston Mazzacane of Sauber, nine and ten, eleven and twelve, Enrico Bernoldi and Pedro de la Rosa, fourteen and fifteen, remember thirteen is not used in this time, uh, of Jaguar, Mikasalo, Luciano Berti, Minardi, sixteen and seventeenth, uh, Arrows, eighteen and nineteen, Raikkonen and Frensen, Jordan is 20th and 21st, and Mark Webber and Stefan Sarasan of VAR, 22nd and 23rd. Light rain for the beginning of the, of, of the year. Good, okay. So we're gonna have to wait until we put down some laps. Maybe people won't meet the 107% qualifying time. So hard tires because of course I want to test out our true pace. And I'm gonna equip like dry tires right away because we're not doing laps in the intermediates. And let's get in there! Ladies and gentlemen, we have returned to the beginning of the 2004 season, kinda. Rubens Barrichello takes pole position for the opening race of the year, the Australian Grand Prix, right behind Ralph Schumacher. Third Fernando Alonso, a 31.5, just a bit behind Barrichello, ahead of Fisichella, who's fourth, fifth is Juan Montoya, and sixth will be David Coulthard, seventh, 
is Joss Verstappen and then 8 is Oliver Panis, a full second behind Alonso, which is a bit concerning. I hope it's, some, it's something that only happens here in, um, in qualifying. Uh, Frensen is 9th, Bernoldi 10th, De La Rosa 11, 12, 13, and so on and so forth. Dead last is a lazy. I would like to tell you he was, uh, he only did laps in the wet, but he did not. He did put legitimate laps, so I'm not sure why he is so far back. Things that happen. Uh, Bridgestone not doing a good job, mostly because the Jaguars are terrible, but at the very least they have someone to play with in the form of, uh, well, Jordan, I suppose. Or maybe Minardi. Let's see what Jor like what let's see what Jaguar does this season. But for us, third and eight, we can work with that. Conditions very dry, high wind speed, we have some wind points, so we should be fine in that regard. Everything is set up correctly here. Now the strategy is of course gonna be the traditional one-stop strategy where we run very, very long. And then do a short pit stop and we are out with no much problem. Alonso as well running a one stop up to lap 33, that will be fine. And 25 laps that stop. Star 6, 5 and 6 because Star set 4 was used. Should be a very straightforward race where we will see how good our performance is relative to the front runners. Remember, our performance will improve as our engine gets better. We're remapping it so it has a bunch more power and we're gonna use that power to beat uh, the top three. But for now, we're in good position. So let's get in there, see if we can win the opener. As per usual, save the game. Keep that at 10, but lower. Actually, never mind. Don't lower anything. Start having the guys, the guys pushing, and as we come up to the halfway point of the lap, I start lowering things. Okay, off we go. Alonso up to second, and Panish will drop. Drops a few positions. Drops down to 11th, and now Alonso loses a place. He's down to third, back to where he was. Now loses a bunch more positions. This wasn't a good race star, our traction control didn't help that much. How much are we gonna lose here? Plenty more. It's always that corner, man. I mean, also the fact that we're heavy on fuel, but... It's always over there that we tend to struggle. Anyway, 8 and 12, we're holding position as much as we can. We cannot quite overtake people, but we should start getting moving. Time to start dropping this stuff. Put that at 5, put this at 8. If memory serves, it was at 8 that I'm supposed to put it, and putting that up to, down to 1. 8 and 11, that's not a great start, but certainly we can work. We can work with what we have. Remember, we're running at 1 stop, I would have preferred to not drop this much uh, from the 1 stop, but we, 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 we can do some work here. We can certainly do some work. The Ferraris are beginning to streak away. No, no not the Ferraris, but uh, Ralph Schumacher is beginning to streak away a bit. Yeah, Rubens lost the lead there to, to Ralph Schumacher. It's fine. Then again, I don't think Williams can keep up, so that is an issue. Who's ahead? That's Frensen. We do need to dispose of Frensen as soon as possible, so Alonso, I would like you to be a bit more aggressive in terms of your overtaking. So, go on, son. Go on. And I don't mind the braking on this particular occasion, simply because... Um, we're running hard tires. Hard tires don't wear out as much, especially with the configuration we have right now. Okay, Panis moves up a position, passes one of the Benettons. Kimi Raikkonen is gone. Good, good beginning of the year for Kimi. Now I need Alonso to get a move on. Cannot get stuck behind an Arrows. Arrows were occasionally an annoying team the previous year. They cannot be annoying here at the beginning of the year, so come on. Good job, Fernando. Good. Okay, drop that to 1 because... By going around there. Drop that 1 to 1 because we don't need to wear out anything if it is unnecessary. That includes, of course, the brakes. Um, yeah, Panis can keep it there because he does need to get a move on there. Oh yeah, this is already high in order, so it's fine. Hopefully, as long as he doesn't make a mistake overtaking, it should be fine. Let's keep our camera on Alonso, so on, on Panis, so I can see what he's doing, so I can queue up the move. Okay, he's in position, so let's get the move ready. Hopefully he gets the move done 
out of this corner. He should. He will not. Despite the fact that who's ahead? Despite the fact that Bernoldi made a mistake, he couldn't get the move done. He got it done there. No mistake. No mistake. Good. And drop that. Drop that. Put that up. Okay. It's fine. Okay. So five laps. That's plenty laps. Right. So cut the recording here. Hopefully we have enough pace to keep up. At least keep up with the front group. Otherwise, uh, the one stop is going to be a bit more difficult to execute than I would like. And if there's on any other one stopper, then we're going to struggle. Still, let's see what we can do. 7 and 9 is fairly decent positioning for us, and yeah, we're going to try and win this race. I was planning to come back to you here on lap 20. It's not lap 20, it's lap 17. To tell you that not much has been happening. The only interesting things that have been happening is that some people went into the pits, like you have the Benettons, you have uh, just Verstappen, Sarasan, Bertie, Button, there's Shadow Lace going into the pits. Physical also went into the pits a moment ago. He's behind Panis on what I think is an early one st uh, two stop strategy. Uh, Raul Schumacher is run running away with it. Not, oh, Raul Schumacher was going to run away with it, but he went into the pits. He's running a two stop, man. Ferrari not, not, not being pretty smart. I was not going to report much on this one, but it started raining. It started raining, and usually rain is not something you see that often here in... Yeah, keep blocking, man. In in the Australian Grand Prix. So, Frenzen going to the pits takes uh, pressure off of Alonso. Rain you don't see often in this place. Alonso's going to be in trouble if it does switch to intermediate, speaking of. Let me prepare pit stops if that's the case. I'm gonna have him go on to lap 42. I think that's about right, but no, I'll just put 10 laps intermediate. Uh, 10 laps intermediate, intermediate, intermediate. And if it switches to wet weather running, then we put on the intermediate tire. But uh, rain was not on my bingo card. And the people ahead is not bad in terms of wet weather. Panis is better than them. I think Panis and maybe Ralph Schumacher are the best wet weather runners in this uh, particular configuration. I cannot exactly remember. Uh, editor me put up some images of, of which is the better wet weather runner, please. Thank you. But uh, yeah, I, I was not planning on seeing rain in this particular race. Let's wait until they cross the start finish line before cutting. Okay, let's cut the recording here because uh, it didn't turn into wet. It will turn into wet in a moment, but uh, maybe it doesn't, and maybe Alonso can stay ahead. But otherwise, we just we just keep running. And if it does happen, I'm gonna pit Alonso first. For the only uh, uh, my justification for that is that uh, Alonso is worse, so he's gonna need the help. Let me increase the braking so that they can. Dispose of those back markers a bit easier. Weber into the pits. Anyway, cut the recording here and I come back to you in a moment. By a moment, I did not mean instantly. Okay. We're gonna do this then. Wet weather running, first race of the year. Going to intermediate right away. As you can see, Pan is pulling away from Ralph Schumacher. So he's definitely faster. I'll take it. Uh, I need to see Alonso. There is Alonso. I don't mind if it switches to wet very quickly because uh, we can, we can do that. No big deal. But yeah, wet weather was not in my bingo card. Just gotta adapt to it. I did not put any wet weather points, as you could see. So we're just running on the default ratings that the drivers have, and of course, Panis is a level five driver, so we should be okay. Debbie could her pulling away. Okay, Pan is coming to the pits for intermediates. I expect one of the Ferraris to pit in as well. I don't mind if it's Ralph. I absolutely do not mind if Ralph comes in with us. Nope, but that Jaguar might. Okay, we're gonna be fine. Perfectly fine, there goes Alonso. Come on, Panis. There you go. 
It's gonna be ahead of that Minardi, yes, okay. It's only gonna pass this Minardi, and I'm gonna have to employ driver orders because Panis is gonna be much, much faster than than Alonso. That is if he catches him, because Alonso is a pretty decent driver, but Panis is something like 5% faster than Alonso in the wet, so significant deficit there. Still, uh, I think the situation has tilted in our favor, except for the fact that the McLarens are yet to pit, so that could be a bit concerning. Let's, let, let's see what happens. Rubens is going to be a threat, of course, but the McLaren staying out so long is actually helping us. Right. Get out of the way. Fourth and seventh. Let's cut ahead. See what happens. Well, the track turned very wet, which is um, not ideal. Definitely not ideal. But I have prepared for this contingency. I have brought Alonso in, and I have put enough fuel for him to be able to finish the race without ever pitting again. 33 laps of fuel, which you might think it's plenty fuel, and you will be correct, that is a lot of fuel. But if the weather stays as is, we don't have to pit again. And, equally important, even if the weather changes again, which it would likely will, we won't have to worry about uh, putting on more fuel, whereas everyone else will probably put in more fuel and will be way too heavy, which works on our advantage because, well, I have a brain, and they do not. They will try to overfuel the car, there goes uh, McLaren in. That is Juan Montoya, the number three car. I'm not sure why uh, the AI assigned the number one driver to the slower car, but uh, it's just McLaren things. It happens. Now, both drivers are going to be on the wet tire now. And are going to be on enough fuel to finish this race. So the only thing we're going to have to worry about is putting this on one and preparing the intermediates or even the the dries because we might as well just go into the dry and just turn laps into in, in on the intermediates if necessary. Alonso is blowing past two people like they are nothing. Uh, David Coulthard is yet to pit. He's a level four wet weather driver if memory serves. So yeah, he's in trouble. Because he has not pit for so long and Jenson Button is going to have to serve a penalty. Panis is going through people, or at least he should be. No, he's stuck in traffic. Jenson, that's why you got a penalty in the first place. Get out of the way, thank you. Okay. Right, so in goes David Coulthard and he's going to be behind Alonso if uh, my calculations are correct, which I don't think they will. I actually think they will. Behind Alonso, but ahead of Panis. Seems realistic. There he is. Okay. Alonso is gonna get caught up by Coulthard, but Panis is gonna catch uh, Coulthard himself. So we should be fine. The threat, of course, is Rubens Barrichello. I do not remember his wet weather rating. So either we're in trouble from him. Actually, he has to beat, so it's fine. It's perfectly fine. This is this might as well be the half race report. So uh, any uh, uh, the situation is just fluid. So yeah. Uh, Rubens has to pit again because I don't think he's on the wet, he's on the intermediate. Montoya, who is the number three car, is on the wet, but I don't think he's that good in wet weather conditions. Coulthard is in trouble. Uh, Gaston Mazzacane did a pit lane speeding, that's fine. Meanwhile, Panis is stuck in traffic, but we should be fine. Anyway, um, get that out of the way. Thank you, Salo. Uh, no pit stops. Uh, Barrichello, Montoya, Alonso, Coulthard, Panis, Ralph Schumacher, Giancarlo Fisichella, and Josh Verstappen. Verstappen, where is he actually? Where is the number 8 car? Because Verstappen is actually very good in the wet. I don't see him. He's behind Mon uh, Fisi. Actually, yeah, where is he? Okay, he's trying to pass Fisi, not having good success at it. He's probably going to catch uh, Ralph Schumacher if he doesn't beat again. But yeah, the very least, just Verstappen is out of the way because he is actually very good in this condition. So at least someone's out of the way. Montoya seems to be catching Rubens, which means Montoya is on the wet and Rubens is on the inters. That works good for us, but we do need to catch Montoya like to be able to make this work. 
and at the same time we need uh, I need Alonso to do his best I, I don't care about the tire you, you just hold him you just hold him with all you have I need Alonso to hold uh, Coulthard with all he can because that's gonna hold him up so that Panis can overtake him and it's gonna slow him down anyway uh, McLaren might be a threat to us in this championship so if we can take points away from them early we're gonna do it so yeah, uh, physics out, what happened? Crash, incident, probably with just the stappen. Could have been with either just the stappen or with traffic. Let's see which one it will be. Or actually maybe, maybe the culprit doesn't DNF because that's something we've seen happen a few times. The the guy that takes out another one doesn't... Okay, this one, it did happen. Just for stopping is out, so we got a Ferrari out. We have a Williams out. Uh, the only thing that could be better is if both McLarens, or at least one of the McLarens, could DNF. That isn't happening just yet. But the one issue is that Montoya is in the lead. We do need to catch him some way. David Gulher is through. Okay. Uh, so don't... Do not... Uh, Alonso, do not obstruct Panis. Let him through. Let him through, please. Because Panis is faster than you in these conditions. So now Panis should be able to get uh, cool tart. But uh, the, the big question in this whole situation is if he's going to be able to catch Montoya. And I think it's going to depend on... I was going to say, it's going to depend on the weather, but it's going to be a long shot either way. Anyway, this has been the Half Race Report, the improvised Half Race Report. Plenty to go, so let's just see how it goes. But before that, can I see? There goes Enrique Bernoldi. That is an incident. That is a rear wing. Who took him out? Now I'm interested. Who took him out? I want to see. Oh, no. The Pentatons took each other out. Flavio Briatore is very, very much mad. He's... It's gonna skin boat alive. I fear for their safety now. <laughs> anyway, Bernoldi and De La Rosa out of the race because they crash into each other. Good. Uh, good teamwork there, boys. Put this to five because you need to pass people and on to the future we go. So, we have caught up to Barry Kello, who again is yet to pit. For some reason, he's in pitting uh, because uh, Williams, of course. David Coulthard managed to get clean, and Panis does manage to get clean, but loses a bit of time. Uh, Coulthard's pace is actually pretty good, so Panis can actually get him, and we aren't actually making any inroads to Montoya, or at the very least, I didn't have the chance to see the gap to Montoya. It's 34 seconds, so let's... Uh, I'm gonna have to stick around. Oh, Coulthard made a mistake. Put the pressure on him. Dang it, and there's that Jordan in way. Come on, Jordan, get out of the way. Let's see. Can Panis make the move? I don't think so, because Coulthard's pretty fast. But he's going to try it anyway. He tried, but he was too far back. Gap is 34.3. Let's see. What is the gap after uh, this lap? Gap will be 36.1. So Montoya is flying. Montero is really quick, probably because he's on a lighter fuel load. I don't know how many pit stops he has. He probably has one. And right onto the wets as well. So he is... And he was on a two-stop. So he's light on fuel. He's faster than us. I'm amazed he's faster than Coulter, to be honest. And in other news down here, you can see that Alonso is about to be under threat from uh, Ralph Schumacher. He's probably... probably gonna get the position so it's fine uh Coulthard already making the defensive move so he's definitely under pressure from Panis maybe Panis is faster we will see but the but but the thing is I think we're getting we're, we're gonna get second no matter what but Montoya the big question is if, if we're gonna get Montoya gap is 36 one so we didn't lose that much time yeah, it's just a matter of seeing. Still 20 laps to go, so... Go, Panis. Alright. 
Juan went into the pits. I think he's just gonna... Okay, he's gonna load up fuel and tires. But we're gonna close the distance. The problem is... Panis just cannot find his way past Coulthard. But... He's right here. Coulthard... Coulthard... Montoya is right there. Panis is right here. The win is at hand if and only if... Freaking Panis can get his way past Coulthard. That's the only need, that's the only thing he needs. Also, Ralph Schumacher went to the pit. Everyone will be doing their final pit stops now. And so should Coulthard, actually. Because Coulthard only did one stop and is consistent with a one-stop strategy. Two-stop strategy, I mean. So he should get out of our way. But still, he's doing an amazing blocking job. It's annoying. <laughs> Let's just knock that down because it just has not worked. Okay, there he goes. He's out of the way. So, Pan is second. Alo uh, Montoya first. And Pan is much better. Much, much better. Than Montoya. So, he should be able to get the overtake done. Alonso, get that move done. Come on. Come on, man. You're there. Dang it. Okay, so two fights going on. The first one is, of course, Alon uh, down here, Alonso Coulthard. Maybe, since they are on similar fuel loads, Alonso is going to get past, but Coulthard is a better way by the driver, so I doubt it. On the other hand, we have Panis Montoya here, and I think Montoya is pulling away a bit. Not good for what we wanted to achieve. Or maybe he's closing. I don't know. Yeah, I think he's closing. He's definitely closing. Okay. So we're going to be able to win this race assuming there's no failure. But getting on the podium is going to be a different matter because I wasn't planning for rain. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. First and fourth is going to be a solid result, I think. Or maybe even first and third if Coulter makes a mistake, which he won't. Actually, he did. But yeah, he's, he's not gonna get close. At the very least, Panis is there, so... Let's focus on Panis, though. I don't think Alonso's getting his, his his car in front. Yeah, he's getting closer. It's over for Juan. It's very much over for Juan, but... You know, Panis just needs to find his way through. And Alonso's being annoyed by traffic. That's, that's, that's typical. And Panis is gonna make a mistake, right? Nope. Both make a mistake, actually. So it's fine. Get more braking in there. This should be a done deal out of this corner. Panis is not through because Montoya does defend. Nice job. It could be here. It is there. Good job. Panis onto the lead of the Australian Grand Prix. And no one's going to stop him now. Because Montoya is not that good at the wet. lead and I'm gonna cut here because I don't think uh, Alonso is gonna get uh, past Coulthard. I doubt that's something that's gonna happen. Anyway, cut the recording here and I'll see you in about 10 laps. I'll see you in a while. I came back. Dang it, Sarosan. No, picks up. I came back just to point this out. Truly is gonna score another point. Ladies and gentlemen, it's lap 58 of 58 and the champion has remembered everyone why he is the champion. Oliver Panis, as soon as the situation got wet, eventually took control of the race, got onto the lead, disappeared into the distance. Second is David Coulthard. What happened to Juan Pablo Montoya? Skill issue. Spun it off, off of this chicane, which I understand. It is very difficult. Third by extension, is going to be Fernando Alonso getting onto the podium. Excellent result for Prost, but the champion crosses the line to win the Australian Grand Prix of 2005. Second will be David Goulhart. Third will be Fernando Alonso. Fourth will be... Oh, Rubens Barrichello, he's getting close. <laughs> no, 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 man. That cannot happen. 
He got dangerously close, but no, 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 you cannot have that, man. This is our podium. This is Alonso's podium. You cannot have it. I cannot allow you to have this podium. Third is Alonso. First and third, solid beginning of the year. Even despite the, un the <coughs> excuse me, the unexpected rain, pretty solid result. Now, will Brazil have rain? Good question. Confirmation then. Panis wins the Australian Grand Prix from David Coulthard. Fernando Alonso in third. Fourth will be Rubens Barrichello. Fifth is Ralph Schumacher. Sixth, Jarno Trulli scoring two points. Three points. <laughs> I know how this point system works. Eddie Irvine of Jordan scoring two points and Heinz Ralph Frenzen with the 1.4 arrows. So, Panis leads, uh, of course, it's just the same order. Panis leads from Coulthard, Alonso, Barrichello, Schumacher, Trulli, Irvine, Frenzen. I doubt Trulli is going to remain in six for, four, for too long. Frost leads the way with 16 points over McLaren, eight, then it's pretty much the same way everyone finished. Save the game right here on the first slot, of course. We made cash, most likely. 1.2 million, that's plenty cash. Panis adds another race win. Alonso, third place, but wants to do better. You will do better, boy, don't worry. Frost had a great race, good. Barry Kello led the grid, of course. New we going to VAR. All right. They, he, he did talk with us, but it, it, it didn't go to... Didn't go anyway. Rory Byrne goes to Ferrari, of course. Uh, fastest lap by Juan. Ferrari wants to retain Fisichella. We lost Neil Oatley. And we did find something. We did find that level to traction control, but that's fine. It's fine, don't worry about it. Okay. So my usual suspects are still around. David Ring, of course, still with us. Now we need to resign Gavin Fisher because he's the, the, the only guy. So I'm gonna have to put up a good deal, and I will show you the deal that I will that I will give him. Still have Pat Simmons, but he's five million. I'm not gonna give him that. So we're gonna try to resign Willie Ramp. He's gonna ha I'm gonna have to give in give him the two year deal because. If I don't sign him, it's gonna be Pat Simmons, and this he's like, stupid expensive. Same with Fisher, it's gonna be a two-year deal, otherwise bad things are gonna happen. Panis, on the other hand, I cannot remember what his deal was, but it was something like four million? But the championship bonus, I do not remember. I will remake the offer later. Let's see, what kind of deals do we have here? I wanted to go mile seven because, of course, blue on blue, but Nah, it's gonna be Marlboro. Of course, Reynolds cannot offer a work deal. That's a shame. 1.3 million. That's fine. That that is what I wanted. There's the hospitality advantage because I put 0% VIP on Acer on the level on the third VIP. Put Acer there and put in percentage on everyone else. Of course, gives you the advantage. No ifs, ands, or buts. So. I can sign Acer really quickly. Just seeing the deals around, okay. I will do the I will I will reorder stuff in a moment of course. We got the new engine. Power advantage here. And we got the new soft tires as well. I think we will use them for uh, the Brazilian Grand Prix. Everything just one. That is suspect, but in any case, we got an upgrade suspension. We will use that for the Brazilian Grand Prix. Now, gonna save here, do the usual uh, stuff in the background that you don't usually see in my spreadsheet. I eventually, recording decided to lag a bit, but I eventually should publish uh, the thing that I'm, the Excel spreadsheet that I'm doing where I do all my calculations and stuff, it might break the game for some, but for those people, just don't don't download it. But yeah, I might upload it at some point. Maybe when I reach 100 subscribers or something like that. Anyway, code recording here, and I will come back to you in a moment. Right, welcome back, everyone. So, 
in between the races I did testing of course as you can see there's nothing why because I got full setup full development full research full engine and full tires uh, with this testing program plenty miles distributed this way so what do we got first I'm putting some points into the design because it is important to keep designing the 2006 car we might be able to get it a uh, better design compared to this one and I want to take advantage of that 2005 we discovered that we have pitch uh, high pitch sensitivity so we're designing a new under tray actually I want to call it a new floor so we're working on that that means on high wind conditions we're gonna struggle a bit but we should be okay technology of course still working on the suspension uh, reliability because uh, that means I can run higher curb usage and off racing line and that's excellent for me driving aids still working on active suspension no one on the driving aids because I have to work on everything else it's more important uh, repaired all of the cars and fully kitted out my spare reserve now what is going on here for the C specification of the number one engine the turn down reliability to put it all on power next thing I'm gonna do is probably gonna take uh, gonna be take away heat points to put them into power and weight tires again some more work on the softs 100% uh, resilience and 100% grip so they're gonna be very good for Argentina and Imola hard tire is probably the tire I'm gonna work on next because the wet weather tires are good but the hard is not so good in terms of sponsorship I'm talking with Marlboro used a bunch of advantages here to get that deal moving talking as well with Renault to get this deal moving uh, no one else in other negotiations because I want to prioritize those two I did put the hospitality advantage on Acer and I'm gonna do it again gonna keep Acer over here and just gonna send an advantage their way when uh, we actually have it but for now we don't so we just stand by so yeah that is the uh, the behind the scenes oh yeah the, the, the deals I forgot to mention the deals so I gave uh, Panis this deal in which I'm gonna give him 1.2 million dollars per championship if he wins the championship again well 1.2 million to his bank account gonna accept that deal I'm gonna be here until 2008 sadly you guys are not gonna see that but I guarantee you he's gonna be around David Ring is already re-signed so that's not a big deal Gavin Fisher I have him re-signed for 1.3 million dollars so plenty cash dollars not pounds Willie Ramp same thing 1 million and of course slightly higher raise bonuses and salary but there is that three um, took a bit of a risk and offered uh, the deal for three seasons and he actually wanted that if that had failed I would have had to go for uh, Pat Simmons and that will have done some damage to our financials but that is fine and Stephen Giles he has a long-term deal so no need to worry about that guy also for some reason well Paul Stoddard does make sense there because I mean all these are terrible but Ron Dennis ahead of us does not this game man anyway the Brazilian Grand Prix. I'm not looking into car scrutiny because um, there's not much to find in terms of like Ferrari and driver aids. We're already pretty good in terms of driver aids. Like, like we have level five traction control, level four power brakes, level two active suspension that could be better, but we're gonna work on that. Level three auto gears. We don't need to steal any more driver aids. We do need to protect our aids, so that's why we have 29% in car security. Of course we're gonna use the engine number uh, the B engine I was gonna say engine number three but no we don't have that yet it's engine B and of course we're, we're gonna be running the second specification of Michelin tires made for Prost this engine is solid because it has a whole bunch more power so we're gonna be a bit better uh, this is likely gonna be a win at least that's what I say right now maybe we're gonna DNF or something like that we were pretty lucky in the previous year I don't think that will hold this year. So, two points in tarmac, two points in rain, one point in wind. Uh, these two points in rain make Oliver Panis a six, level six, wet weather driver. Yes, level six. The two points on Alonso making a level four, so that should be good enough to keep up with uh, any other wet weather driver around. So there is that. The tarmac, of course, to make the tires last a bit more, and the wind to not lose that much pace due to our little issue here the high pitch sensitivity set up the driver aids because of course gotta qualify 
have to reduce that curve usage to 5 for the race. And top speed to 8 if memory serves. Is it to 8? No, to 9. Okay, it's fine. Safe and on to Brazil we go. Right, the Brazilian Grand Prix. I didn't confirm the orders, but that is completely fine. Right, light rain again. I want. Okay, I, I am prepared for this race to be a wet weather race. I do not want it because I want to see how good this are pace in the dry. And wet weather is going to harm Alonso no matter what I do. But I guess we can qualify in the wet, sure. Okay. I want to put down some laps on the Inter, so let's get in there and see how it goes. And so Fernando Alonso puts it on pole for the Brazilian Grand Prix with Olivier Panis second. And this is the third time I'm recording this because the first time the, the, everything was stupid in terms of AI. The second time it was a bit less stupid, but it was a, 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 um, an interesting result. But uh, my recording software didn't record my microphone, so that one got scrapped. So this is third time. Third times the charm, I hope, and well, we're gonna try it. Anyway, cross front row, third is Ralph Schumacher with Rubens Barrichello in fourth, fifth is Giancarlo Fisichella, sixth, David Goulhart, seventh, Juan Montoya, eighth, Josh Verstappen, here is the rest of them with a lazy ninth, and Enrico Bernoldi, tenth, Raikkonen, right eleventh, De La Rosa, twelfth, and here is the rest. Of course, we had uh, rain, so these, pe uh, these people didn't make it in, Frensen did make it in. In my previous recordings, it was only Salo that didn't make the cut, but in this case, it's both Jaguars and Mark Webber that didn't make the cut. Frensen does make it into the race. Seen some very interesting behavior considering uh, all the things I've seen. But yeah, in previous editions, this didn't happen. Like, only Salo got knocked out. So there's that. Overcast conditions. Um, due to the events on previous races, I'm kind of hoping there is no rain, but I did put some rain points, so rain could be good for us, but I've seen the AI be pretty stupid. Anyway, um, we're gonna run a fairly traditional one-stop strategy, uh, two-stop strategy here, uh, with Panis going the longest. 27, 18, 27, 27, 18 should be fine, and Alonso going 26 and 52 should also be fine. He's on pole, so he needs to be a bit lighter. I could give them a three-stop strategy, but I think that wouldn't work. Also, I'm going to start another house rule, which I, in which I do not use something, which is pretty overpowered if you've seen this series so far. But first thing, let's get in there. First things first, you see this thing is at 75. I'm using one of the uh, that folder tricks, uh, unlimit.dat which uncaps FPS and then I'm using a frame limiter to run this thing at 60 FPS. You probably can see it because this thing is running at, uh, the video on YouTube is probably running at 30 FPS, but just you know that I'm doing something different just to see how the game behaves. So uh, the game speed is effectively duplicated. So this 75% is actually 150%. Just, just, to, just to show you what, uh, how things are different. I'm not gonna have them push until actually they make it to turn one. Let's see. One, two. Can we hold on to that? No, we cannot. Panis drops to eight. Eleventh. Bad start. Okay. Um, the trick I'm doing here is first let me lower that. Lower that. The trick I'm doing is that I'm not gonna use the block order because a do or die block, as you've seen in this series, is pretty overpowered. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna use that. Panis is losing places, which is very unfortunate. He cannot be doing that. Uh, this means that I'm also gonna wear out my tires a bit more. So I need to be very careful with those. There's a DNF there. I'm gonna have Alonso drop his uh, break into three. Same with Panis. And off we go, lap one and. Alonso with a significant gap, Pan is uh, struggling. This is possibly gonna be, I was gonna say a win, but we're actually much, much slower than the people ahead. 
So there's that. Who DNF, by the way? It was Raikkonen with an engine failure on lap one. That is very unfortunate for the Finn. And we're going to increase the braking because I need Panis to move up. Focus on Panis, please. There is uh, Montoya back there. I'm not sure what he's doing back here, but he is. As long as he doesn't pass us, there we go. We pass someone. Uh, the little thing I have maybe makes it a bit more difficult to interact with menus, but uh, whenever I don't need to go full tilt on things, I just uh, uncap the FPS and just when I uncap, look how it looks. Actually, it's not gonna go fast because the recording does make things a bit slower than they should be, but right now it's running at like 65, what's running at 65 FPS. It can actually hit much, much higher values. There he goes, Panis, up to 8, doing a decent job, but I think Alonso is getting caught up by Barrichello. Let's see how this fast lap uh, shakes out. Rauschenmacher is catching, but Rauschenmacher is behind Coulthard and Rubens, so we should be fine. As long as Rubens holds there, Panis, well, he isn't quite close in distance as much as I would like, but he can close the distance a bit. Everything should be fine. This is lap 4, Alonso is leading and I don't know if he's like, stretching the gap or if he's uh, getting reeled in, I'm not sure, but things are happening. Can the Panis overtake that Sauber? Yes, I can. Okay, good. Lower that to 3. I see, I'm using 3 because um, Alonso made a mistake. I'm using 3. Ooh, big mistake, yeah. And he heated up his car. Using 3 because that allows the AIs to defend fairly effectively. I'm gonna lower Panis to, uh, to 1 because he isn't actively fighting. He isn't actually in need to defend, so he doesn't need that much breaking. Anyway, got recording here and let's go to the future. Hopefully I am recording my audio on this occasion because in the previous editions I had no microphone audio so i'm just gonna check that recording and make sure everything is working you will have noticed by the fact it is lap 27 that not much has happened like legitimately not much has happened. uh panis started to make his way back up he's right now in fourth due to the people behind him so rav schmacker I think that's Rubens. It is indeed Rubens and David Coulthard and Juan Montoya. Uh, Juan Montoya for uh, that extension. Dang it. Uh, also pitting. Not much has happened, but what's gonna happen is that ooh, Fisi and Montoya pit at the same time. Okay. So I was I was thinking maybe Fisi is a one stopper, but he isn't actually. Who might be a one-stopper is just what's happened. Ooh, the little uh, panic block. Panic block. You defend. And you, you, you get that up to five because there's a chance we can get ahead of PC right here right now. Anyway, that's Alonso's first stop. He's gonna have another one along the way. We could like stretch it one more lap. Did the same with Panis. But now they're gonna have to come in, into the lead will go, well, it depends. It depends on, on Panis, it depends on Joss. Then again, we're actually close enough to Joss and the Williams aren't actually that fast, so... Even if uh, Joss Verstappen is on a one-stop, we might be able to beat them because we're closing up very fast. There goes Ralph Schumacher. But we're right there and we're on soft tires, so that means we can, well, fight him. And I'm gonna drop this to three. Alonso is gonna have to defend his own. Fortunately, this stint with uh, which is on is a bit shorter than the previous one, like two laps. So he should be okay. Alonso is now likely to win this race, which uh, very good. Panis is not gonna win this race, but the podium is a. Ch there's a chance at a podium here. Whenever we get it or not, I... I don't know. I don't think so, actually. That we actually get a podium with Panis on this one. Because even if we're actually going to dispose of uh, Ralph Schumacher, I, 
I can nearly guarantee that. Let me drop this to three so that it doesn't burn his stars throughout the steam. I can nearly guarantee that we're gonna dispose of Ralph. Uh, of Ralph, yes. But I'm not sure if we're actually gonna get Joss. And Joss is on a once then again. In previous iterations of this race, there has always been an AI that does 50 laps on a one stop, which is insane, but it has happened. I think podium is unlikely, but we're not gonna break anyway. So we're halfway through this race and I'm annoyed because this has been a very boring race. Like not much has happened really. Other than Panis blowing the start and us fighting with PC and actually being in the lead despite just stopping thinking he can win this race. Not much has happened really. So the current order is let me remove that. Current order is Just Stappen, Fernando Alonso, Giancarlo Fisichella, Raul Schumacher, Oliver Panis, David Kutar, Rubens Barrichello, and Juan Montoya. Um, pretty, pretty, pretty standard order for what, for what we expect. The, the only reason I have right now is, well, not much has happened. I don't have too many recordings of this race. It's just, just, just... Things and stuff that happens, man. Like, let me explain the previous races. The previous race, um, the previous attempts that I had to attempt, uh, recorded this. The first one was stupid. The AI lapping uh, dozens and dozens of laps on the dries and not pitting for intermediates or wet when it was the time. And AI doing 50 laps on the dries despite being very wet. It was just stupid and I hated it. I decided. Then I recorded it again, we doubled DNF, uh, I had another AI doing 50 laps on dries, an AI not pitting for fresh tires, I won a double DNF that actually gave us points because a bunch of people DNF in the final laps. Uh, Jock the Stappen goes into pit, finally, I think he's gonna be ahead of uh, this little bunch right here. That's disappointing, anyway. Um, let's worry, that's high ahead of Ralph. Okay. There's a chance we can beat it, but uh, Oliver needs to beat Rav. Like, he needs to beat him. Anyway, um, double DNF, bunch of AI randomness, but it was a great race. I wanted to use that one. Uh, didn't, like, my microphone didn't record anything, so scrap that one. And we're going to this one where nothing is happening. Like, of course, Alonso is in the lead. I'm very happy for him. But there's no, like... Massive crashes. There's no. Well, we've we've had some DNF. Alacy and Ricky Bernoldi have done the the, the the crash. Well, Kimi has blown up, and Bernoldi and Alacy spun off in unrelated incidents. Like as you can see, Alacy is on lap 19, Bernoldi is on lap 15. Unrelated incidents. So that has happened. I can see that Just Verstappen is very slow, while us in the form of Panis are fairly fast. The only reason is that Panis doesn't doesn't have the pace today, like um four tenths of Alonso is not ideal if you ask me. And that wasn't when they were light on fuel too. But yeah, we're gonna work on that. We're gonna Like I told you podium is a bit difficult because we're gonna have to be just on track. And for that first we need to pass him, create a bit of a gap, pit, excuse me, pit and pass him ahead. Of course everything could change in one of the guys ahead, DNFs, but I find that unlikely. I, but, well, it's actually like a possible, but I'd rather it not happen. Well, maybe if it was PC, yes, but I'd rather it not happen if it was like, you know, Alonso. <laughs> so yeah, there is that. Um... Unfortunately, the rain points got wasted because there's no rain today, unlike the previous races, and then again, that might be for the best, because the AI couldn't handle wet weather situations in my previous recordings very well. In any case, uh, Alonso is pulling away from Fisichella massively, which is a great, great success. He has the right fuel, Panis is gonna run into the proper fuel in a moment, but he's really struggling. Now, what is going... 
Did he make a mistake or something? A big one. Two big, big two laps, two mistakes. Okay, Panis is not gonna finish on the podium. That is very unfortunate. Cut the recording here and I will come back to you when we get into the like the final pit stop laps. This has been the Half Race Record uh, report presented by me and I'm very disappointed in Oliver right now. Right, so Fernando Alonso is on his final uh, pit lap. I am a bit afraid if Giancarlo Fisichella adopted exactly the same strategy we did. If that's the case, uh, it's gonna be a fight to the finish. I hope he actually goes a bit longer. But yeah, right now, uh, Oliver Panis is in a bit of a pickle because he overheated his tires, so they are trash. Alonso did save his tires plenty, so it's working out. I think even if uh, Fisichella pits, I think we should be okay. But I'd rather he not pit. He went forward. Okay, good. Um, yeah, Panis is in trouble because he's gonna drop behind uh, the Stappen, of course, but also Ralph Schumacher and uh, maybe Tavi Coulter. What are you doing not overtaking people? Come on, Panis. Overtake people. They are back markers. You need to get through. Come on now. Stop losing time there. Anyway. Um, I am pretty confident in saying Alonso is going to win this race. Someone the NF. Oh, a BAR, okay. There he goes. But again, he's losing a whole bunch of time living with these pack markers. I, uh, yeah. Thank you, finally. Okay. So, Panis got his race screwed by himself, by his inability to have good pace, and by back markers. So, he's going to drop behind Ralph Schumacher. He's going to drop behind Joss Verstappen. He might well drop behind David Coulthard. The idea of this was that he will be able to do more laps, be able to create some sort of offset, but instead he's just 7 seconds ahead of Josh Verstappen, which not nearly enough to beat him. Panis has not had a good race. <laughs> like, at all. But anyway, here he comes to pit final, final stop of his day, and it's Okay, I was hoping that Arrows didn't pick. At best, he's gonna be ahead of Coulthard. Yeah, he should be clear for her, no problem. But I doubt he's gonna catch this group. So, his actual fight is with David Coulthard. Let me increase the overtake on back markers because... Gotta be able to overtake back markers, right? Montoya pit, so he's... He's not a threat. But yeah, Panis is looking at a fifth right now with a sixth if David Coulthard is competent enough. And Alonso is looking at a win unless he has some sort of DNF. My current hope is that there is some DNS, DNFs ahead, like Joss Verstappen and Ralph Schumacher taking each other out, but I doubt that will happen. Joss seems to have decent pace, but uh, Ralph is better. He should get through, but if he doesn't, that's gonna be fun. You know, um, right now, Fiskala's pace is so slow, like he was on the pace with uh, Alonso. I wonder, is Fisi having some sort of car issue? Because, okay, he's of course stuck in traffic and so on, but his pace is atrocious. And I know, I know Alonso is on soft tires, and the soft tires are faster at this point in the race. Same thing with Panis, which is why he's catching just for Stappen. But Fisi's pace has looks just falling off a cliff like I'm legitimately wondering if PC has some sort of car issue or something like that that affecting him in this way because he's so slow oh I knew it PC is out he did have some sort of car issue which is the entire reason why he just DNF so there we go Alonso is gonna enter his final lap uh, Okay, it was hydraulics issue. I saw I, I saw a Sauber DNF and I, and I thought maybe someone took him out. No, 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 no. It was an actual car issue. So Alonso dominates this race and he's gonna win it on merit and pace. Exactly what we could have asked for. Second is gonna be Ralph Schumacher who had some not bad pace actually, pretty, pretty, pretty solid. Third is going to be Oliver Panis, which honest, who honestly doesn't deserve to be here. Like Joss or Coulthard had better pace. Uh, well, not quite here in the end, but yeah, they had better pace. Alonso wins. 
Second is gonna be Ralph. Panis is gonna be third, which you know I need the man to to have much, much, much better pace from now on because man, what he did this race just. If he wants to win this championship, he cannot have this kind of underperformance too often. It was just annoying to see how slow he was today. Anyway, I wonder who's gonna be on the points then. I, of course, didn't keep that much track of them because... Not our jury, uh, jurisdiction, but let's see who finishes in, who finishes in the points. So... Win for Alonso, second for Ralph Schumacher, third is Olivier Panis. Um, oh no. Okay, hopefully my recording is still working. Okay, um, Panis in third, Verstappen fourth, David Coulthard is fifth with Robins Barrichello, sixth, Juan Pablo Montoya seventh with Heinz Ralph Frensen, eighth, not bad. De, De La Rosa just behind Frensen and Fisichella could have been in the points but had an issue. The Minardi is in 11 and 12. Uh, then again, that's mostly because of the DNFs and the DNQs. So win for Alonso. Panis leads this championship, but Alonso is also tied with him. David Coulthard and Ralph Schumacher are tied just behind and then you have the rest of them, Ibarrichello, Verstappen, Trulli, Montoya and so on and so forth. Frost leads the championship, of course, ahead of McLaren, Williams, and Ferrari, Minardi, Jordan, and Arrows. Solid race. Hopefully, I did get this one on film correctly and stuff. Paul to win by Fernando, by the way. So, Alonso had another win, who led the grid. Paris is happy with third. You shouldn't be. Frost had a great race. Williams happy to see everyone in top six. Davidson is going to Sauber. Fizzy is staying at Ferrari. Rubens is going to McLaren. All right. Uh, Alonso fast slap. Nigel Stepney Williams, best manager. Thank you. Uh, Flavio Riatori, worst manager. We got a driver eight stolen. Hopefully it's not our traction control because that's gonna be annoying. Here is all of the deals we have signed. The testing stuff. I don't really care about testing and so on. And no, 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 no. Go back. Okay, that's okay. R and D sponsorship. All the stuff we have. Licensing, which I don't care about. We have breach, I know. Okay. Uh, what can I do here? Of course, everything this is nearly done. I'm gonna offer uh, Bordeaux nine, uh, 900,000 for a championship, which you will never get, so I just just, just offering that deal, that deal out of principle. This is done, so let's just try to hire more people in the commercial department. First, I'm gonna fill it up, then I'm gonna redistribute people. This is done, this is done, this is done. Until 2007, we won't get there, but I mean, I will treat this one as if we're going beyond 2007, just so that things make sense. Um, this chassis is still on the works. Hopefully, it is a legal chassis. This four should be just about fine, so I want to work on brake performance. And active suspension of course barely moves, but that is perfectly fine. Now, the cars. As you can see, both cars, some wear and some damage, which means we will not be able to test at all. So how do I, how, how exactly am I going to deal with this? Well, we have 11 million in the bank, so I can just build two cars. Build two cars, which disposes of your most worn cars. There you go. No issue there, I could have just repaired them, but that was gonna cost spare parts and I just didn't want to do that. It was it is a cheaper option, but we have eleven million. Let's 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 use some of our resources. Anyway, um three blocks or jeez, okay. Um hospitality advantage on Acer and we don't talk to Acer anymore. Next deal we're gonna go for is Castro Credit. We're going Panasonic, so let's bring Panasonic to Argentina. And who else do we need to bring? Castrol is fairly happy. Credit Suisse not so much. Let's bring Michelin. Michelin is important. This deal should be done in the next race. Mm, this deal will be done in the, in the next episode. So we got to start working on the Michelin deal. I will do that in the next episode. Also need to work on the other deals because, well, we don't have much. And, oh, of course, I cannot see exactly what we got stolen. 
So, I think that will be it for this episode. Okay, that's it. Um, you know the usual YouTuber stuff. Comment, like, subscribe, support me on coffee if you really so desire. And hope you like this one. Pretty good. We're gonna have a serious championship fight between our boys. And, well, it would depend on what the other people can do. But let me tell you, we'll be fine. We'll see you on the next video.